such severe depression and one day someone gave me this powder, it made me feel normal. I've not had enough money to, you know, buy food. It's not easy being a mum, being a wife, being a business owner. She saved my life. I never met I'd be dead. One thing I don't do is put filters on any of my pictures. They look like they've all come out of a factory. Welcome to Emily Abraham Presents the Love Luxury Podcast. I've got two guests with me today, which is really unusual, but they are husband and wife team, Joe and Nicole Seeley. Hello, guys. Hi, Hi Emily. Thanks for coming onto the show. Pleasure. How Where have you come from today? We were actually down already, weren't we? Because I've got offices in London, so we were here, which was good. Stayed in the hotel last night, which was fab. Um, but we'll be going back to Cheshire after this. So Manchester ways, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Up, like, up north yeah. from us, quite a way away. So I know that you are probably known by the viewers for being on The Real Housewives of Cheshire, yes. which is a reality TV show about what it's like to basically be a woman with money that lives... In Cheshire, essentially. <laughs> essentially, yes. yeah. Um, how did that come about for you? Um, interestingly, we've been in Cheshire about nine years, and when we first moved up, uh, sorry, when we first moved up, we were approached. Well, I was approached, and I was like, "How? Oh my god, I couldn't think of anything worse. How awful!" <laughs> like I didn't really watch reality TV, yeah. And the thought of being in front of a camera was quite horrifying. So it was like, definitely not for me. And I was like, no. Um, they contacted me each season, so I think that would have been about the second year they were they were running. Anyway, to cut a long story short, we then were looking at buying a football club, and we were in Dubai, and we were sat around the pool, and I had a glass of wine in my hand, <laughs> and the phone rang, and I went, oh, it's Housewives, uh, the producers again. Um, so I was on the phone, and then Joe's going to me, no, speak to them, speak to them we're buying the club it will be good advertising yeah. for the club which you know from a business perspective because I was always really nervous because of the sort of industry that I'm in mm. um that kind of you know how it would be received so that was one of the other yeah. reasons anyway the rest as they say is history I met with them we didn't buy the football club and I ended up on a reality tv show um yeah interesting and and we were talking about this I mean there's a lot of drama on the show and it's not it doesn't always showcase the, the business aspect of me. So sometimes that's a little bit frustrating. But um, it's been, you know, it's been a, a journey and interesting. And I think every opportunity that falls your way, you're supposed to, you know, sample and see if it's for you. And that's what I've done. So I want to get into like who you are, where you came from. But you just said to me that it wasn't something, the TV show wasn't something that initially you felt drawn to because listen at the ultimate end of the day you're a businesswoman aren't you mm -hmm. that's who you are yeah that's how you make your money and that's essentially how they found you is because you are a very successful businesswoman right yeah, I mean the show's supposed to be aspirational that is you know the whole point of it yeah how did you feel going on the show because I know that I, it's not, I don't watch TV, so I'm not no. going to lie to you and tell you it's a programme I've watched, but I know what reality is like. Uh, reality shows are like, we've been on reality mm -hmm. shows. I, I didn't even watch that either, to be no. honest with you. But I know that there's like um, quite a superficial element to these shows where, one, you've got to be glammed up all the time. Yeah. For the show, you want to be, don't you? You don't want to be presenting yourself in your pyjamas and your slippers walking around the set. So you've got to give a certain element of beauty on that. So that's something you've got to maintain. But also, like I said, you're a businesswoman. And I don't want to be judgmental of the other women on there. But I'm sure that there is an element of where the women are on the show and it's because they've married somebody who's wealthy or they're living a, a life of luxury or they're ladies that we call them ladies that lunch down here. Yes. And for you, I can imagine as a businesswoman who, you know, a team, both of you, you're working so hard together to achieve your goals. How was that to kind of settle into? Because for me personally, I would find that really hard. Yeah, I think, um, look, you try not to judge. And I of think, course. you know, at the end of the day, there is no judgment. Um, if someone, it's like if someone inherits money, that's not their fault, is mm. it? It's then what you do with the position that you're in, I believe, anyway. Mm. Um, but yeah, I did come from quite a different background. Um, and no, I didn't, you know, I didn't do the above. 
Uh, did I find that difficult? Um, no, but the superficial part of it I found quite difficult. And I am quite a black and white person. Um, and I think if something is right or something is wrong and you know yourself in reality TV, that is not always the case. Mm -hmm. So probably the hardest thing for me, um, Joe will say to me, you know, quite often, oh, no, why are you getting so upset about something because I'm quite I think what you see is what you get uh the good and the bad so yes I did struggle with that um with regards you know a couple of the women you know and ultimately the, you know a couple of the ladies are now divorced and so they they're doing their own businesses um some of them the the, the program is their job as you rightly yeah. say um and they may have born businesses from doing that as a job uh for me yeah it's different that when I'm running a business uh and trying to film and being a mother still, I mean, the children are older, but you don't stop being a parent. And actually, I just said to your husband that um, it actually gets harder, I hate to say. I think it gets more difficult as they get older. Um, but yeah, so yeah, challenging. Um, How old are your children? 26, uh, 22, and just about to turn 21. Wow. Okay, so yeah. they're all grown up. Yeah. And are they from both of you? Like, are they your children? Um, they're from previous, but Joe and I have been together a long while, so he, Joe's bought the children up, haven't you? Yeah, I don't like the term stepkids. I really, You're a bonus yeah. dad. I really don't That's like it. I think, it. I think it might not be. I think it well, could he's be damaging them up. to the kids. Yeah. It's more than, yeah. more than the title. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we met Nicole. It's our family, Nicole. isn't it? I met Nicole when she was 34. 30. 33. And she'd been sterilised because she had cancer. Yeah. Oh, so... I knew we knew at that point. We tried IVF, it yeah. didn't work. And yeah. then I, well, we tried four times. To be honest, we had so kids well. in the ass. It was no. Yeah, yeah. We, it's our family, isn't it? Yeah. And, it is and our family, you're yeah. super close. Like, you know, we were out with um, our middle one yesterday. yesterday. Um, she, you know, she adores you, doesn't she? Yeah. She can wrap you around her little finger as well. <laughs> um, but, you know, if you, yeah, you know, having having a child doesn't, they say, doesn't make you a parent, does it? Um, it's what you do, duration. You've been there pretty much the whole of their lives. So, yeah, that is our family. You're, yeah. I mean, I understand what you're saying because I grew up uh, fostered. I was fostered. So my family weren't from birth in any way, shape no. or form. And they're very much my mum and dad. And I think you get it sometimes when you've chosen to be a parent to children, actually you can give them a lot more love. I so I, I don't find any stigma in um, any kind of blended family. I, f I find the word, I also don't like the word step parent. It's weird, isn't it? It is. And I think that um, the word bonus mum and bonus dad is actually a really nice mm. way of saying it because it is a bonus to have that other, that extra person yeah. in your life. And if you love your wife's kids, then why shouldn't you be their father figure and the other way around I don't think that it should be classed as all that no. oh yeah they're this and they're that it's no. you're just a family and it's yeah, a okay. blended yeah. family isn't it so you are very successful in what you do and you're a self-made woman right that's what I've discovered about you but it wasn't always roses and peachy keen life for you um I read one article and it said that at one point that things were so bad, you literally had like £21 left to buy food for you and your family. Was that right? Yeah, Is that right? Been, there has been times where it's been really difficult, you know. Um, it's not always been easy. Um, I, you know, from being young, like I say, I left school at 15. Um, I, left, I left home, I left school and home. Um, and so, yeah, I've worked since I was 15 years old. Um, and does, you know, it comes with ups and downs. So the start, but look, listen, they're, you know, they're things that build us. Um, some people cope better than others. Uh, but yeah, and even equally as a parent, you know, we've been through some recessions. So as a business person, it's not always easy. Um, there was a young woman, which strangely, that um, I bumped into and she was talking about the taxes at the moment. And she was saying, oh, you know, but young, but um, business people get such preferential rates with tax and we pay this and I was like but do you know why and she went well just that you you know it's better for you and I said why is it better for me to pay less tax and she said well I don't really know so I said well I said when you go to work you know you're getting paid that every Friday 
the reason entrepreneurs get, you know, pay lower tax is that they take all the risks. They employ people, but if they don't get paid at the end of the week, they don't feed their families, mm. but no one sees that side of it. So, of course, over the years, there's been ups and downs. I won't look at Joe, sorry. Um, <laughs> of course, over the years, there's been ups and downs. And, and I have, you know, I've had, I've not had, I've lived life of ultimate luxury, but equally not had enough money to, you know, buy food. And I always say to people, you know, you're on social media, if anyone has anything to say, I say, but you don't have anything to say when I had nothing, mm. you know. So I've worked hard for what I've got and I'm not going to apologise. I don't think I'm overly frivolous. Um, I don't think that I'm that wasteful. Uh, I like nice cars is my thing. I don't blame you. I love nice cars. <laughs> I mean, my little pink wagon sat outside, isn't it? Oh, I did see it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't miss the flipping thing. You need sunglasses. I knew where it was because I said, there's the car. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So tell me how you guys met. How did that come about? I went out on a, it was a Thursday night. It was the 30th of November. You remember the day? Yeah. That's it dedication. About, it was what was she wearing? 30, Hold it was on. Raining. What was she wearing? She had a, she had a black dress on. Did I know, you, she, I know what she had on for her first date. And I know what I wore <laughs> on our first date. But that night, I don't know what I wore. But I was out with my ex-girlfriend. But she was my ex-girlfriend then. Okay. And her friends. Yeah, they weren't together. I'm just yeah, pointing yeah, out yeah, that yeah, I'm yeah. not and that her girl. <laughs> and I met her at the bar. Yeah. Um, and I used to... Oh, such a, I was such an idiot. I used to walk to the front of bars when there was a queue in a nightclub and say to a girl, order me a drink, I'll buy your drinks. Oh, it's a really good way yeah. of doing it, though. It was. And she said no. Oh, because I could buy my ever. own drink. First time ever. And I thought, mm. <laughs> I kept going and going and going. She said yes, didn't I? Well, I just said, look, at the end of the day, you know, if you want to push in, mm. buy the drink, but, you know, I don't really want one. Um, and you followed me around. And, yeah, followed yeah. around. And I got a phone number and I took her out. That was the Thursday. I took her out on a Saturday. Yeah. I, w I bought a new outfit. I wore, I've still got a brand coat. I wore brand jeans, brand jumper, and I bought this brand tan coat. I bought, them, I bought it up here, actually, in Holt and um, John Lewis. And... I took her out for Sunday lunch on a Sunday. The Wednesday I went and watched Casino Royale with her. And then the, I put a Christmas tree up on the 14th. And then I would come around Christmas Eve, Christmas night, and I never left. So what's the, it's of no relevance whatsoever. I, I'm going to ask it because I'm just intrigued. Is there an age gap between you guys? Yeah, I'm nine years older than Joe. I nearly said younger, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nine years, yeah. It's funny because that's the age gap between me and Adam as well. Really? Yeah, so I'm nine years older than him. Do you get any backlash about that? No, not at all. Never. No, because like you and Adam, she looks better than me and you look better than him. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that helps massively. In fact, most people say to me, you look older than her, or you've had an uphill paper round. I mean, I don't know how old you, I don't know how old you are. But interestingly, I did say to you, was it today? It might have been yesterday. That for the first time I was thinking, like, I'm going to be 50 next year, so I turn 50. Um, and I thought, you know, when I hit 60, I think that's when it might really tell. I don't know what made me think it. I've not really ever thought about it, but I did the other day. And then he said, what did you say? Well, we're stuck with each other now, so it went <laughs> well by then. But, yeah, no one does really say anything negative. Do you find that you get negative yeah comments. i do get a lot really yeah. yeah yeah i get a lot of social media negativity people telling me i look wow. like his mum and i look like no grandma. you look fabulous i do i get a, i get it a lot but when people see me in the flesh they always say to me you look so much younger in real life than you do I get that on the, the tv which mm. is funny isn't it mm. I'm, I, I mean i knew that the tv put a few extra pounds on i didn't know it put a few extra years on as well <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not, I was, um, I, well, I just said to you, didn't I? This is what actually started the conversation. I was in Space and K, actually. Yeah. And the makeup girl, so this lady came over to me. She said, oh, hi. She was like chatting just about the show and stuff. And then she went, so I just want to say, she said, you look so much smaller and so much younger in real life. And I'm like, I get that a lot, a yeah. lot. And then you kind of think, well, mm, is that a good thing? I think I'd rather look better in real life. But then I think, what about the other million people watching that mm. think I'm just... Fat and old and ugly. <laughs> oh, bless you. No, I mean, yeah. I looked at pictures of you and you definitely oh. don't look fat, old or ugly. You're <laughs> no, not, and that that's, you could not describe no. Nicole Seeley with those three <laughs> words. Let's be fair. You're a beautiful oh, woman. And I, I'm, I'm an aesthetician. So I'm looking at your skin and you've got amazing skin. She's incredible skin. She's got. Hasn't she got amazing oh, it's incredible. skin? My mum and my sister have got good skin. I don't really do a lot either. No. I'm quite low maintenance. Um, 
I, I'll have like um, she no, no, no. I use about fifteen potions at night every night. Really <laughs> no, I am quite. I, I have. Yeah, I quite like the high food facial. Yeah. Um, I do that. It seems to work quite nicely yeah. for me. I can't have a lot of Botox because I look peculiar. I look like the Joker. It's not a good look. I tried. <laughs> so got, I just because you've got evil eyebrows, you look like a baddie. I, can't I do. When it yeah. goes up like that. Yeah, yeah that, I tried that, it. I was like, like <laughs> I can remember. You know, like when I first was on Housewives, and that was like, oh, you know, because everyone's like, oh, gonna have to try. I'd always just had a little bit here. Yeah. Because yeah. I frown, and I was like, "All right, I could have more." Mm. Oh, it was not not, not a good, good look. look. No. no, not a good look. And also, I've got quite a fat, like a naturally full face, so filler wouldn't be for me. I mean, I mean, my you face. Don't need it. No, so no. so I don't. So from that point, the only thing I'd had done since I joined Housewives was my nose, just because I'd broken it. Um, three times over the years and I had like a lump here so I obviously had that removed and I think that did make a big difference because it was a little bit hooked at the end where I had this lump but apart from that I think I wash my face in hot water um I use a good moisturizer and a night oil that's all I use that's I'm not, amazing. I'm not joking. I heard to say to somebody the other week, and I said, please don't ever say that again. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't, yeah I'm if not you saying get, it again. If, 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 if don't go, no, I, well, I can't remember the question was, but it was something like, and she said, oh, yeah, I'll use a little bit of bleach in your water, and I went, please don't tell no, me no, no. that. No, if you, no, not often, like twice Place. twice a year. You know, if you really want to have a clean, you just like, don't tell people that. And I was like a <laughs> tiny... Apparently, she no, apparently in your face wash? A little yeah. bit, no, in the hot water, a tiny little drop, and then with the, the pads good, to clean it all... Amazing, Skin. really? Yeah, not all the wow. time, but I'm not. I'm not recommending no, it. Just no. saying. Wow, rec- that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So listen, I want to talk to you about business, yeah. like how you got to where you are, but I also want to talk to you guys about your relationships because I know that things couldn't have been easy for you in the early years of your relationship because Joe was really honest with me before the podcast started and he did tell me that he used to be an addict and he told me, he's very open and you said you've been clean 10 years. No, not 10 years, I haven't been clean 10 years. I've been clean quite, I don't talk about how long I've been clean. I've been clean today. Okay. But I've not been clean 10 years. Okay. No. So it's so it's not easy. I went to rehab 10 years ago. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's what he said, he went to rehab 10 years ago. So I know that that's not an easy thing for any woman to have to deal with, or anybody, mum, male, women, mother, father, yeah. children, whatever. How have you managed to cope and find the strength between you, especially you, Nicole, to stay in a relationship with someone that is openly saying, I, I was an addict? Like how, how hard was that for you? Yeah, I don't think you consciously, because to start with, I don't think you realise, you know, I certainly didn't. Mm. Um, it's not something, you know, at the end of the day, it's not something I suffered with. Mm. Um, so, yeah, in the, you know, in the early days, I don't think I realised. I think um, I've learned a lot over the years. Am I suggesting that anyone should stay with an addict? Absolutely not. And probably, I say to Joe this, um, in retrospect, Probably I should have left and probably had I left, maybe we would have got to a place quicker and we might have still stayed together because I think ultimately we were meant to stay together and we did stay together. So I don't regret it. Um, but yeah, probably some of the times I should have I should have left. And I think that if anyone is in that situation currently and, you know, they probably should remove themselves. I'm not saying do it for good I'm not telling anyone to leave their partners mm. but you can still be supportive unfortunately what I have learned through it is that no matter what you do whether you micromanage whether you love somebody I am a fixer unfortunately the only people that can fix it is that person and whether they're your child your partner whoever it is you can't fix it for them you there is no magic cure um so all you can be is supportive um, I said I really struggled in the early days when you first went to rehab. Um, that I really found difficult because I kept thinking, well, why why can't you talk to me? Mm. Um, that I, you know, if you go to me, you used to go to the meetings, like literally, I sent me under. It didn't. I didn't obviously say that to him, but I found that so difficult. Um, but I think again, saying to people that realizing and over time realizing that. They can't talk to you because they already feel bad. I think this is what I think anyway. They already feel bad about themselves. So they do what they do. So then they feel bad about what they've done to you. So they don't want to talk to you about it. It's you know, it's, it's a vicious circle. I was just gonna say yeah, that it's a vicious circle and it isn't your fault. It's not my fault. It's just the way he was born. Um, but yeah, I don't... <laughs> 
No, it's not. It is a fact. It's just, you know, it's in it's you, isn't it? Fault. Yeah, no, it's not, there is, it's no one's fault. It is no one's no, fault. Um, it just is the way it is. But yeah, just, but you do have to sort of take care of yourself a little bit as well. Um, and I didn't at all. I didn't at all. And I was a very private person. Um, so I, that I found really difficult because I like, and then over the years, yeah. I'd like, if he did speak about it, which was wrong of me, because you know, if he wanted to share it, I should have been comfortable with that. Mm. But I can remember just thinking, oh, please stop talking about it. Mm. I just, I didn't want anyone to know. Yeah, yeah, and like, you know, behind closed doors, Joe was like then out to the world can see. He's like the fun guy all the time. So I'd feel anxious if we'd go out. So I look like I'm less fun because I'm too busy worrying about him or, mm. you know, what's going to transpire. And like I say, everyone's addictions take different cycles. And we, you know, it's not always the same, I don't think. And I think it moves and changes over the year. Mm. Uh, sorry, over the years. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know where you find the strength. I don't think, I think you're in the moment. I don't think you're planning ahead thinking, oh, this is why I'm doing it. Um, but what I did do, one of the last times, I, I actually, I think it was a bit of a turning point, was I'd always been frightened to leave him on, on his own. Um, and I actually did. I, I got up and it, we'd met me and I knew that he'd obviously was under the influence and he was trying to obviously, you know, pretend he wasn't. I'm like, he can't lie to me. Yeah. So when he was in the other room, I just went and left. And I think it was a bit of a wake up call because I think he was so shocked that I'd left him somewhere because um, yeah. I never had. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, look, listen, there, there are no cures, um, but it is possible for it to change. So if people are there in a bit of a dark place, yeah. there is hope and it can be better. We were really lucky that we, you know, we do get on. We liked each other. We we barely argue. Mm. And the only time really we did argue, I would, and I think you'll agree with this, is that when you were probably after you'd been using, because you weren't that nice. Mm. Um, and that's a fact because people, when they've come off of drugs, are not that pleasant. Um, but no one else sees that, do they? Yeah. They yeah. only see the fun, bubbly yeah, of side the, of it. You don't they see they the don't inside. see the damn, yeah. Locking yourself in a room for four days and yeah. stuff like that. But, yeah. you know, we've had a long time now. I've been so most of my yeah. 30s, really. Yeah. So, most you know, of the limps. Yeah. So, there's no pressure anymore, is there, though? There's not that daily worry now. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and also, that's why I say, that's why I think it's important. I said before, I do it one day today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because if I start thinking about it tomorrow, I can't do it. Yeah. I used yeah. to fall down because of that because yeah. I see someone that was. A year or so when I was only three months, in like when I was in my twenties, because I started trying to get sober in my like early twenties, mm. couldn't do it, mm. but I tried. Yeah. So, you were a footballer. Yeah. How did it come to be that you went from being a sports person to an mm. addict? How did that happen? I wish I'd tell you. So my so what happened to me is I got an injury. Um, I knew he was going to say that. And then my dad died ten days later. Oh, so sorry. So, but when in my in my life, and my mum's great. I've got a lovely mum, but she's soft. My mm. dad was my discipline, mm. and so was football. So I'd, I'd lost the two things that I probably that I only ever cared about. I only ever wanted. To, I didn't know I was lost. So I only wanted to be a footballer. I didn't think about anything else. I never learned anything. Else. I left school. I played football, um, and that was what I thought, always thought was going to happen. I lost that. I lost that discipline. I lost somewhere to go every day, and I and, and I lost my dad. And I think looking back now that I had. Such severe depression and a lot of stuff going on with me. And then one day someone gave me this powder. It made me feel normal. Mm. And it, it's how I learned at a younger age to fix myself. So I look at it two ways. Eventually it was killing me. And I think I was trying to commit suicide for it. But at some point it saved me. Yeah. Which is yeah, I funny think. to say, but it kept me alive in the early days because it took that other feeling in my thing that was kid that old I had for my dad inside of me disappeared because of it. So and I think a lot of addicts have, you know, will say something similar about something that's happened. It stops you thinking. I learned how to cope with the world. It's a numbing it. agent, isn't it? Yeah. I learned how to cope with the world in the wrong way. Mm. Something give it give me something I didn't have at that point in my life. Um and it got older me. Yeah. And it's it's so hard to get out of, isn't it, addiction once you get into it. So you, I can tell, love the bones of Nicole. I can, the way you talk about her, the way you look at her, I just can see that you guys have got an amazing mm. relationship now, which is so fantastic to see. Obviously, things weren't easy for you. We've discussed that, mm. yeah? You've admitted that you've had your problems and you've been there to support your husband because that's what love is. 
Uh, you don't just walk away. That's what our vows are, isn't it? We're sick of thin, you know, sickness and in the house. And it is a sickness, I believe. Yeah. How are you to now with everything that's happened? So how has it intensified your relationship, the, the problems that you've gone through? I, well, I think we've always had, we have always got on really well. We've always spent, you know, a lot of time together. Mm. And, and this is only recently that I've, someone asked me a question um, and it just came up and I thought, no, that is how I feel. You cannot change what has been, but you can never, ever, if anything, a little bit gets fractured or broken along the way, which ultimately, you know, if we get hurt by things another person does, you can't put it back to exactly how it is, which is what we all strive to do. Mm -hmm. So over the years, always you wanted it to go back to perfect. Well, perfect is never going to be perfect and there's not many relationships that are. So now my mindset is that we have, you know, the next chapter, we don't need to look back and try and recreate what we had because there would have been good, bad. And, you know, actually we're in a great place. I think we are in a great place. Um, but yeah, stop focusing on what has been and don't keep trying to make it as it was before the problems mm -hmm. occurred because you can't. So there's no more pressure, which I think has been big key for me. I don't know about Joe, but for me, it's I've stopped putting that huge pressure on myself. And I think, and Joe, you know, Neither am I there expecting that he's never, ever going to pick a drink or a drug up because I don't know that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know that. But we have one condition is, and the only thing I've asked for, is that if you do it, don't try to lie about the fact that you've you've messed up. Just don't lie about it. Be honest and then what be will be. Uh, I hope that he doesn't. And he's doing amazingly. He looks great. I think it's probably, you know, the healthiest in mind and body that I've ever seen him, ever. That's fantastic, isn't it? It's really lovely to hear that. For you, Joe, mm. how has it into, like how has it made you view Nicole that she's seen you through the good, the bad, the ugly, and now you've come out the other side? What you, how do you feel? I about see it two ways. I see it. I say to everyone all the time. Not everyone understands what it means. That she saved my life. If I never met. I'd be dead. My mum thinks it, it's a fact. Mm. Don't even. There's no. There's not even a conversation in it. I'd be dead. The other thing is. Why I said it, and I, I just I said this when I was talking to Adam. I t we went out last Saturday, went for a walk. We ended up sitting on this park bench and we was eating a chicken kebab. <laughs> right. So glamorous. And a diet, and a diet coke. <laughs> and um, I said to her on this bench, I don't know how you stayed with me. Yeah. And I'm sorry. Mm. And I think that that's all I can give today. I mean, the, the question is, if I if I'd lie, if I used again, would I lie? Of <laughs> course I would. <laughs> right, because that's that's part of the illness, but. Do I think that I'm a long way from it? So I don't think I will be, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But for me, I think she's never not been there for me. I have no reason not to give my wife everything that she deserves. Mm. Really. Which is lovely. Isn't Which is it? love. Yeah. And the thing is, is love. Mm. All she really wants is my love. Yeah. Put it down. And appreciation as well. Mm. And I think you know one thing about your situation. Not all ex-addicts, not all recovering addicts can say they're sorry. I don't... It's, it's hard. It's really... It's probably... That's the hardest part of recovery, isn't it? It's hard. Is saying, do you know what? I was a, not a very nice person mm. to you. I, I And I'm really sorry for what I did. But when you hear that on the other end, it, I can only imagine that it's like a massive weight because there's never any of that that actually you feel that yeah. it's meant well, when in, they're in it. Yeah, when you're in oh. it, you could say like, sorry, sorry to every me. Day. And it doesn't and Jerry, matter, And does I'm it? like, so actually, yeah. Word. yeah, and yeah. you've been clean for quite a long time. And actually, this this conversation that happened last week, and like I say, it was, it was a, it, we was having a Sharoma, weren't we? Or, yeah, I think it was a Sharoma. Yeah. Um, and it was great, um, <laughs> low maintenance. But because it was so natural and saying sorry then and it was like came out of the blue for no real reason you know we weren't you know it was for no reason other than we were having a nice time actually just sat there and yeah that actually is probably i would probably say the single time the ever time. no no that it meant for me mm. that i actually felt like that was a real 
real genuine genuine sorry yes he's been sorry after because aren't we all when we've oh, messed up yeah. and they're really but you mean it when you do but it. you do mean it but really you're feeling sorry for yourself and that's the truth because he feels bad about it, him yeah. so then those sorries don't really mean a lot to me um and it's about more and actually showing me and you've shown me for some time that you're sorry and he doesn't have to keep being sorry no um, but yeah, that was really nice. For, yeah. yeah, I mean, in all honesty, and I, I remember the other time. So, three, four years ago, I mean, that show how long I've been at it. I said sorry in a car once. Like, it's very similar to that. About it was saying, you know, you know I said, uh, anything I've ever done to hurt you, I'm really sorry. And there's the only two times. They're really hard because I think it all the time. Say it's really hard. You can do the recovery sorries. You know, you go through mm. when you're meant to be doing and all that. Yeah. That's easy. Mm. But like the actual ones to your loved ones and your wife and that thing where you're just sitting there looking at it thinking, I'm so lucky that you're sitting there. How are you sitting there? Yeah. That's and it makes you feel emotional, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Thinking about it. Yeah, I was just sitting there thinking, I do not know how I'm here. Yeah. I'm really proud of you mm -hmm. because my, I don't know if you know, but my mum was a heroin addict. I didn't know that. Yeah, she was a heroin addict and she died when I was six. So... For you to have changed your, turned your life around, mm. I say, and for any person that I meet that goes through any kind of addiction, to hear your story, like I feel proud of you, and if I don't know you, like we just met today, I can't imagine how proud your wife and the kids feel of you as well. So. That sorry and those feelings that you have in your head that you're constantly telling yourself you need to feel you feel sorry and that you want to say it. Like Nicole said, actually, it's not necessary all the time because no. she knows you're sorry now because your actions are showing it. So when that sorry comes out every once in a while and it's actually heartfelt and meant is, I think, more important yeah. than hearing it whenever you're thinking it. And you don't need to think it all the time no. anymore. No, you, no, you don't. Know. You've got no. to stop beating yourself up now. And that's where the next level of development comes through. And then, you know, things will improve even more for you, I feel. Mm. But you, I can see that you really mean it. And it touched me, actually. It touches me watching him talk about you and how sorry he is and, and you know, the path that he's taken. Let's move on from that okay. because that's not all you guys are. You're not just an ex-addict and you're not just the wife of an ex-addict. You are a force to be reckoned with, both of you, you know, you, like you said, you were going to buy a football club, you know, you open, you put money into a restaurant that we just were talking about off camera right. that didn't work. Things happen and we all develop. Where are you both at in your lives now? Tell, tell me what you're doing with your lives now. Well, we probably, like I've got quite a lot going on within my own business that I've had for a long time. I've been within um, the industry that I work in, which is predominantly railway construction for like 28 years, but I've got other arms and, you know, I made the decision obviously before COVID, COVID's impacted everybody. We're back to pre-COVID pretty much now. Um, and I made the decision that actually, you know, would I want to sell? Do I want to take it to the next level? Um, so I've started to acquire different businesses to grow the group, to grow the brand. So I've been really busy doing that. Joe's obviously had quite a bit going on of his own stuff so we've not been crossing over as much as we have done previously um but yeah i'll let you tell about your own bits yeah so mine since i when i when i come out of being an agent when i sold the business mine mine's been vast we had some gyms for a little while we sold those and since then i've just invested in different businesses at the minute i've just taken a third of the brand mr whippy okay i know third of an edit. who hasn't heard of mr whippy so i know got, unbelievable got a third of that now <laughs> and a third of that at the minute. So we've just, what we're doing with that is we're going to grow that into a licensing brand. So we've just licensed it to a cupcake manufacturer for supermarkets. I mean, who That's wouldn't want in. a cupcake then made we're going by to, Mr. Whippy? We've got ice cream, but we've got bubble gum and flake ones going into Home Bargains next month. And then we're going to go milkshakes. He's uh, nodding wafers, over there as well. Uh, I love like it. I they're, they're fantastic. Um, and they're going to be £1.24 for two, so it's cheap as well. So that's just happened, and then we've got a number of other. I do a lot of crypto and NFT stuff. Okay. Um, on the back I do a lot of selling football. Still, I still look after some players. Yeah. For my sins, <laughs> um, and w we have massively different skill sets. I say to everyone, she's much better at everything than me. But I am the best sales and He's network good person yeah. ever. Yeah. So if I meet somebody once, my skill is I will never remember anyone, your name, but I will remember everything you do. Yeah. So like. 
I met my, so I met someone 15 years ago and something will come up and I'll ring them. Yeah. I'm really good at that. And yeah. in seeing opportunities where Nicole is probably a bit more of a fuller package than I am because I don't like spreadsheets. Or he's not a details man is what you're saying. If I won't pay it. So I say to everybody, if you've got an invoice, don't give it to me because won't, I won't pay it. Not on purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't, I'll lose it. Don't email me. I don't like being emailed. Yeah. He barely likes answering the phone to me. <laughs> don't <though>. like. <laughs> I do. Um, mm. I like what's that. And then... Um, I'm and like if, you, if you need if you need anything else, you bring my wife or yeah. can't. Yeah, I've had to learn to or not cans. answer the phone. I'm the person that physically yeah. like oh, your murder. Like if the phone is Three ringing, it's like because of the, where I came from. So I used to Fire do a lot. I, I used to he goes mad. So when I first started out, I, I obviously did the actual recruitment yeah. side of it. That's how I started, um, and I had a very young child, so she was a baby. But I still worked out. At night, so she would put. I would put her down to bed, work the nights, come back, and then I recruit in the daytime. So when they're all moaning at my office, I say, "I've not been funny. You don't even know now. You all have it so easy." So because of the recruitment side of it, I was always on call. Um, but I had a really, and I still do have a really bad habit of putting my phone under my pillow, which oh, he goes yeah, absolutely yeah. mad. It's actually not good for you no. to have those radio, those phone waves by so close to your brain. Is I actually know. So what so I think is when we go to bed, <laughs> yeah. you put your phone on the table. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. That's all I ask. Yeah. I don't want to see text. It but literally she, makes me... Because her business is 24 hours a day. Yeah. I mean, it happens less now because you, you're a lot bigger, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. But she's, she's, favorite, she's a micromanager. But her phone ring at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You used There's, to happen a lot. That happens once or yeah. twice. Oh, Joe's, uh, Joe's eaten many of, meals on his own over the years. Well, <laughs> instead, of, instead of like getting up, going into another room, yeah, yeah. she sits up in bed, <laughs> the lights come on, and she's shouting <laughs> or going like, dessert, where's someone else? Ring someone else. And sitting in bed, oh, I'm up now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't listen. It's a, you know, so try, try to <laughs> manage it a bit better. Where I think we were in America once, and I think I was in the bathroom, that's like a, I, that I couldn't crazy. sleep. So, uh, you, no, that's not. On, no, you had an alarm getting going off, right? So we're in, we weren't traveling with the kids, then we? we're yeah. there. Yeah. She's in a hotel room sometimes, or apartments. And if we was in a hotel room, I'd wake up and she'd be sitting on the toilet with door <laughs> shut with a laptop at four o'clock in the morning because of the time zone. <laughs> right, and I was thinking this woman is normal, but she's grown this incredible business where she's probably the only female CEO in that industry. Yeah. She's hundred percent sure. There's of that more business. women now. Because she's like it. But I you, couldn't do what she does. I used to like, I was so bad that I would, my hairdresser used to come at 4.45 oh, in the morning because I couldn't bear Not to be miss it like yeah. any time at work. My my oldest daughter had learned, she used to like follow me around mm. with a little, you know, little pre 10 phone yeah. and, a, and a pen Pretend and paper. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I probably, you know, look, there is always a balance. And, you know, I, uh, one of the, my FD is actually a lady and she's got two young children. And sometimes she'll say, oh, you know, like little comments at the school. I mean, how can other women make a comment because you've not done the drop off at the school? That doesn't matter because you're also providing, she provides that they can do all the after school clubs that they want to do, all the extra things that, you know, there is a balance. And she's there every weekend. Mm -hmm. But women to women are so judgmental still, yeah. which, you know, like it amazes and me. I, and I think ultimately everyone is working really for the family. Yeah. So, I mean, it's well, they wouldn't do it. The to, they wouldn't possible. do it to a man, would they? No, there is a lot of mum shaming, mum guilting Awful. for women that are in business and industry. Yeah. I think that you're right, a hundred percent. I think it's all right for them though, because if you've got a husband who's a banker or he's an accountant and he's earning loads of money, and he's saying to you, "It's all right, you don't have to work." If you've got no aspirations and you're not, yeah. if you know, if you're not ambitious, just be a mum. No problem. But not every woman's like that. No. And you're definitely not like oh. that. From what Joe's just told me, the reason you're successful, well, I mean, obviously, the reason you're so successful and uh, an industry leader in what you do as a woman is because you've worked blooming hard for it. It's not because you've been handed everything on a plate now, is it? You know, I mean, I don't know your family background, but what I'm saying is, it's like, your mum and dad didn't go to you, right? Here's 10 million, go and set up a no, business, no. you know? And everybody's family, you know, everybody's family is different. Everybody's circumstances are different. If you are not ambitious, that's fine. But you can't judge other mums no. who are ambitious. Yeah. But I get that feeling that because I can never go to the Mayfair, I can never do the every week going to the mass. At, I'm 
busy. I'm, I'm someone was saying after the age of 40, you kind of, you know, energy levels start to decline. And if we don't get the balance right, we end up unwell. Um, but no, I, I think now for me, holiday, I love to travel. Even when I had no money, travel is my thing. I'm not really a materialistic type of person. Yes, I like nice cars. I'm all about travel. Um, so that is my that is my go to. But it is making time out. I will go like now to the hairdressers. If I want to go to the hairdressers for a blow dry in the middle of the day, that's what I'll go and do. Everyone laughs. What do I do to unwind? Right. If I'm really stressed out, you'll find me. And don't laugh. Walking around home sense. Right. I go in there and he laughs. If TK, I, Max, TK, I love a walk around home sense, looking at all the bits in there, just because there's a big one, you know, on the yeah, retail yeah. park. And I'll just go and have a little unwind for yeah. half an hour, grab a coffee, yeah. come back to work. So whatever it is, I mean, I know it's a bit random, it does. but whatever <laughs> it is, and like, because in the middle of the day, there's not many that many yeah, people yeah. in there or whatever. So just like, you know, I have quite often come out without buying anything. Um, but I've had a little look round. I've tried to clear my mind a little bit and it's just a little bit of time for me. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where you find it, yeah. but you, but it is important. And being able to delegate and trust in your judgment of who you're delegating to. Because I think there becomes a point when you grow to a certain level that it is not possible to micromanage because you, you don't get any rest. And I was at that point where maxed out. I was maxed out, so stretched mm -hmm. and by doing what I have done has enabled me to now take on more businesses um, and I'm trying to create and I'm just looking at obviously adding into the team a little bit more. So, yeah, I think it is important. But, yeah, but equally, I, I feel you, I get you, I've been there. It's not easy being a mum, being a wife, being a business owner, being a boss, you know, trying to be the best at everything that you can be all the time. I also agree with, like, what we were saying about the there's a totally different spin on it for men to women. Mm -hmm. So guys can go to work and they can come home and they can sit down. A woman can go to work, come home. She's got to do the washing, cooking, the cleaning, look after the kids, put them to bed, get everything ready for the next day. Also yeah. carry on working and still be in full business person mode. Whereas a guy, it's, I mean, look, not all, I'm not being, I don't want to categorize everybody because yeah. everybody's situation is different. But in general, mm. that's kind of how things are. And I also feel like as a woman in business, it's a lot harder for us, one, to be taken seriously, yeah, two, to be respected, but three, that people don't seem to understand that actually you have got other things that you've got to prioritize. Like you do have, your kids are a priority. Yeah. They're not a second thought. They are a first priority, but alongside with your business. And it, I, I, that's something I struggle with is because I feel like there's not much understanding for women in business. And I also, the respect thing, like you're, you probably now, because you've been in business for so long, are at a level where people have to respect yeah, you. Yeah, I think they might not always like me. I think me, I was terrified I, of you. <laughs> 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 yeah, a little bit. I think it sometimes. It comes in the it, One of the guys that you funny, but sad, I've got a new guy that's working for me at the moment. I've, I've, I didn't employ him, but he was in the office and uh, I came down and Joe had got punches. I'd taken his car, so I said, oh, he was walking past. I said, oh, you wouldn't do me a favour. Can you see if you could go and get a tyre for the car? So he's run around, but... Um, it, Kelly who works for me she was like when he's gone out he's like rang up about three times he's going I can hear him and he's going yeah, I don't want to get it wrong and I said is it okay she said no Nicole she said he's absolutely terrified of you I was like <laughs> why but no I do I, I get what you're saying I think in business I think I've been in it a long time now so regardless of whether someone likes you I like to think my and it is mostly important that you're respected. Yeah. I think even if people don't agree with some of the, the stuff that you do, to be respected. But no, it wasn't like that in the early days. In the early days, it really wasn't. I mean, but I was, I kind of get a 10, a sort of the feeling that you're a bit like I am. But I didn't want to play on the fact that I was a woman. So I actually really went the other way. I never dressed like a man, if you like. I, you know, everyone laughs because I always wear high heels. That didn't change. So they all knew me for having all high heels all the time, not obviously on site. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't try to be something other. The only thing I aspired to be was good at what I did mm -hmm. and not because I was a woman. But now as I've got older and I think about the things that were said to me, I mean, one guy that worked for a really big company and I'd still do business with him, so I won't mention the company. Yeah, yeah. But this, this particular guy called me Doris. He never, ever called me by my name. He called me Doris. 
but you know, but you know, like now in this day and age, can you imagine? And like some other things as well that have gone over. And like I remember going into a boardroom, literally it was all men, um, and this was for Network Row. And literally, my my shirt button had come undone. They let me sit in this meeting with my button undone. Not one of them, you know. Um, yeah, so literally, but patronising would be on site and uh, people would go, yeah, you did, so little girl, you don't How know what you're you talking about. did you deal with it, though? But I just sucked it up and it's actually, tough. well, I, well, the funny thing is, I was thinking about this guy that used to call me Doris all the time because on LinkedIn, his name had come up. And he, do you know what? He was still doing a very similar job to what he was, he was doing, doing then. Before. And I thought, you know what? It's enough said, isn't it? Yeah. Really? No do development. You know what I mean? There was no development there, but so he called me Doris um, look, I think times have changed. I think if things have moved on. But now I do kind of want to promote that a little bit more. We're saying like HS2 at the moment, one of their poster things is for women in business um, and women in row, et cetera. So I'm going to get a little bit more involved in that, I think. And if I can pass on my experiences to young women now, I think I should do. Whereas I kind of backed away from saying, well, I'm a woman in business. But I think it is important for the future generation. Yeah, I think it is because I think, so I'm 46, so I'm not far behind you. And well, I'm 46 this year, actually. Oh. I think I'm 45, 46 this year. Like, we don't celebrate birthdays. Oh, so okay. I, oh really? Yeah, That's interesting. As Muslims, we don't celebrate birthdays. So I've lost track a little bit. Or is it just because I don't want to get any older? Can, can I sign up? Because that <laughs> yes. sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, where's the, where's the contract? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I feel that... Um, Women in business, particularly in male per, per, perceived male dominated yeah. roles, is because is definitely becoming far more acceptable. Is the mm -hmm. first thing, um, because when I was young, you'd never find a female mechanic. When I was a kid, all mechanics were men. Mm. Now, poster girls for mechanic, for, the poster people for mechanics courses are, are females. They're young girls. Why not plumbers, electricians, yeah. anything, and railroad is definitely something that you would only think of as a man-dominated yep. business. So for you, how long have you been doing it? 28 years. So that's a really long time for you to have been really able to, back then, being able to get your foot in the door, mm. be taken seriously, and to be able to get to where you are today. Yep. Such a massive achievement. Because the bigotry towards women then was... Like you said, not hidden. It was, and you, they oh. could say what they wanted yeah. back then. They yeah. could call you a Doris and nobody batted an eyelid and oh. thought about it. Yeah. And, you know, a Dolly Bird and, you know, like you said, oh, she doesn't know anything. She's just a woman or, yeah. you know, yeah. like those kind of thinking processes. Yeah. And it is, everything's changing and it is changing for the better in that respect. Mm. I do wholeheartedly believe that. So, yeah, 100%, if you can take that and impart that on to young girls that want to come up and, and try and be even a fraction of where you are then. Yeah. I think it. it's the balance in life and I do believe this. I think it's still, you know, we, we don't want to go so far the other way no, that we we breed you know a, a new you know generation of uh, you know people that can't deal with anything because i don't think that's great We're either going that way, though, at the moment. you know so for, right me, so for me and even as a woman and even through what i have experienced um and i've witnessed you know within in you know, you know in a business environment you witness whether it be racism mm -hmm. you know whatever it might be or you know ages and whatever whatever you you know come across but i think there is a balance we do have to you know we don't want to be in an environment where we can't speak at all I agree. do you know you know like you know if a guy says something because some guys now are so petrified even to say compliment aren't they mm. let's not make people just be respectful mm. that's what i as a woman want i don't expect men to be perfect out there and if they you know but I do, to have respect is what we sort of should aspire, I think, as women to have equal respect. I agree. And it goes both ways. Women yeah. respecting men and men yeah. respecting women. A hundred percent. I I genuinely feel that you're right. It is kind of going the opposite way. Like you can't say anything these days for fear of the backlash. Yeah. Like us being on social media, you being on the TV, yeah. you being in the, like everybody, anyone who's in the public eye, mm. even not in the public eye, it's like everything is, everyone's turned, they use the term snowflake and it is like, mm. what are you going to do? Melt, you can melt in because yeah. somebody said something that you don't agree with. It shouldn't yeah. be like that. But also in the same vein, 
don't say something that's going to hurt someone's feelings or no. be disrespectful. No. It's no. not necessary no. because there's a fine line between having your say and actually being blatantly rude and disrespectful. Yeah, it's a massive, yeah. massive line between that. So that leads me on to something else. So obviously you're in, you're on TV, you're in social media, you're on social media, you're in the public eye, both of you are. Have you ever, so you told me you've never really experienced um, negativity about the age gap between no. you two, which is fantastic. But have you ever come across people that are keyboard warriors, haters, oh, yeah. that kind of stuff? How do you deal with it? Yeah, I think in the I think in the scheme of it, right, so what, obviously first of all, you're a bit like, is it's quite strange when it first happens. People, you know, think they know you, they could have an opinion on you. Um, and it is obviously tricky. So, Look, on the whole, I mean, if there's a comment, someone said, oh, they st I get quite a lot, I've got short arms, which I have. <laughs> Can't change it, <laughs> but I have short arms, it's a fact. Yeah. And uh, I think someone put like a meme up of like a little Tyrannosaurus Rex or something. Was it the one with the little short arms? So but anyway, so is that, am I going to fall apart over that? Absolutely not. Um, when people are really, really, I think, if I think someone's got a point or it, it warrants a reply, I usually try and do it in a way that it's quite pleasant. And on the whole, I think if I reply back, well, I don't have to explain myself, but if I think it did, you know, think it warrants mm. a, a reply, I will. And I usually can get them, they normally come back and apologise then, which mm. I think, look, it's not about us, is it? it's about the person. I mean, you've got to be pretty unhappy or sad to be sitting. You've got to think about what their lives must be like that they are sitting there, someone they don't know, well, look, it could be someone that you do know because there are people out there that, hidden profile, yeah, yeah, hidden profiles. So I think it's, is it a hidden profile and is it someone being spiteful to you or is it like a normal keyboard warrior yeah. that's actually, I mean, I've got to feel sorry for them. That's why I, I actually sit there and think, I actually really feel sorry that you're going to sit there um, and spend your time saying mean things. Look, listen, there's a lot out there. I don't I get a little bit of it like everybody does, but I don't um hide anything on my on my stories. I don't I know some of the girls that I work with because when I first joined they were like, Oh, you can block certain words, you can do that and I think, Well, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. And if someone wants to put something negative on there, I leave it on there. I don't like to start deleting. The only time and not that it's happened, if it was anything about um someone close to me that they were deliberately being hurtful about and I haven't had that then I would remove it. But apart from that, crack on. Well, I think that, I mean, I'm a bit of a new year thinking this. Oh, he likes it. it. A strange man. So if you ever got me, I'll repost it. I'll have it. I'll have a conversation <laughs> with you. I think it's hilarious. Very strange I, man. I think it's hilarious. But I think that comes from being his bolt and ban. I just yeah. like it. It makes me like, you can't upset me. Yeah. Right? I, I feel like I'm unset. I, I, you cannot up say anything to me that will offend me. I'm unoffendable, yeah. I think. I do feel sorry but for the youngsters. When, though, when, when, when people we work with on that show, some of them will moan about it. I yeah. say to him the same thing every time. We choose to open our lives up mm. to the TV mm. and we choose to be on social media. If you cannot cope with it, don't do it. Yeah. I think I feel really sorry. I mean, if you buy the ticket, you let them buy the ticket to watch you, they're entitled to say what they want. No, but so, mm. right, I disagree with that. Yeah, okay. Because the reason I say that is because just because you put yourself in the public eye, yeah. and that goes back to this respect level, yeah. right? When I was a kid, I was brought up as a young child and a young adult, that yes, you can have views and opinions. Mm. There's nothing wrong with having views and opinions. But if your view and opinion of somebody is negative and rude, keep it to yourself. Yeah. I'll agree with that. Yeah. yeah. And so I don't, everybody is entitled to an opinion, but Just are you entitled, entitled to voice your opinion is, is the question. Well, I think other than that, I think, I think of it like this way. Like a bit like when Nicole said, they've got to find us, right? Write a message. Yep. Send it. Yeah. Hopefully, it might get a response. Might see it get read. I spent a lot of time running the man in your head. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think you 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 have a bit of a unique, and I think through sport, I think. But no, I don't think I don't get any. Yeah. I'm in in the scheme of the world, I'm a white straight male, aren't I? Yeah. Middle aged, so I'm not getting any of that really hurtful stuff that I people don't think can men get. get it as much no. as women no. do. No, I, I I'll agree be with honest you with you. No. Oh, I mean, like the cut. I think I probably because um, last, the episode that just yeah. aired, I got a little bit of stick on that. Um, and you, first of all, it's like, you know, people, you don't see, you've, you've filmed reality, you know, you don't see everything, do you? Yeah. So I was a little bit frustrated just because of the, that's the first time in a while we were at a charity event um, for cancer. And it was like, 
the way that it suggests, you know, in the context of what went on. But so it did feel like I wanted to reply to a couple of these questions, but just in the moment, because I think then you're sitting there explaining it. But actually, you're being, these people that have a comment about that are actually being far worse mm. with the comments they might make. Mm. Um, but let's say I do feel sorry for the young people out there. Um, you know, if they get an attacked about the way they look, or you know, I don't like stuff like that. No, that I don't isn't like. I don't badges. look. Listen, you can say I don't agree with you, or oh, she's not really for me. That's fine. She, I don't particularly like that person. She can say that. When you personally attack people, I think that's a problem. If you, you know, we're laughing about my short arms, but to say a young person yeah. that's that could still developing that could really yeah, mentally yeah. hurt them. You know, someone's weight. Um, you know whatever it might be, then no, it's not right, is it? They can't it? have a lot going on, can they? Because no. I would never do it. So there's something my nan always said, and I think I've said this before in another interview, is that, and it's and it really is right, hurt people, so people who mm. are feeling hurt, Millions. hurt other people. Yeah. Right, and you, like you said, I've got to the point now where I feel sorry for people. Yeah. I feel sorry that one, you don't have enough going on in your life that you're spending, like you said, so much time to find me, message me, wait for my response, reply. Yeah, like you said, I'm running around in your head. You're nothing to me, yeah. but I'm something to you because you had to take time out of your day to comment. Me, as a person, I'm so happy in myself. If I see something I don't like, I scroll past it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't go on that person's no. page and then say, oh, this is a <laughs> video. Oh, excuse me. No. <laughs> I don't go on there and go, no. oh, this is no. a rubbish video. Or um, you're really ugly. Or, <laughs> well, exactly. Do you know what I mean? No. Or, you know, or your, sh your shoes are crap. Yeah. I, d I don't. Why? No, it's, Even it's, if it's a... I mean, I don't think like that, but if that was a thought that came into my head... You wouldn't what? share it with I them. wouldn't share it. No. No. Because I was brought up that actually, well, that's that person. That's their personal preference. That's who they are. And if yeah. that's how they want to present themselves, it's up to them. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I only make a point of leaving positive comments on everything. But we're in a generation where it's very different. And you're right. The younger ones do have it really hard. One, yeah. they've got the pressure of mobile phones, looking good all the time, social media pressure that they think they, because of the way social media is portrayed, they think, like, for example, the Housewives of Cheshire, yeah, they think that you don't have to do anything to get mm. to where you are. Agreed. They yeah. don't know all the hard work Agreed. that got you to where you got, yeah. So they're seeing these flashy cars, these holidays, these nice clothes, these beautiful jewellery, women looking amazing all the time, mm. nice clothes. They don't see that actually there was a lot of hard work that went into that to get to have that. So they think, oh, well, I don't need to work. I'll just, I can have money. I'm entitled to money. That's it. They mm. feel like I've had people come That's a come generation here. thing now. It is. It? But I've had people come here to do menial jobs, and I mean basic admin jobs, thinking that they're going to get 60 grand a year and they've just left school. And I'm like, this is a £24,000 a yeah, year yeah. job. and That's good money. And that's good money yeah. for someone who's just left school. Yeah. You know, you be, you, you're, you know, that's a really good wage for you to be taking home. And they don't seem to get it. They don't understand that actually that's not how this world, like you have to work up the ranks. They just think they leave school and then they, they get up there. Yeah. And I feel, I do feel sorry for them because that in itself is a hard thing to deal with because who's there to, nobody's showing them that journey, that yeah. struggle, that route, route all the way up, which is why it's so good for people like us to sit down and have Talk conversations yeah. and say, actually, no, this was not easy. My relationship was not easy. There's been times when I have wanted to give up or there's times when I've had to take a back burner, or, you know, like take a step back and reevaluate re things. And I have had to stay up till four o'clock in the morning on the toilet so my husband's not telling me off because I'm <laughs> working still. Yeah. That they, because they don't see it they don't no. see that it's important yeah. to make them aware yeah i think it is and i think i think social media gives them that problem because actually not many people put what's really going on on their social media do they no you know i, mean? I don't think what's so bad going on in my life i people don't put, people put their best selves on social of course media. Yeah. majority of social and media that, do you know what and that has a really positive impact and that can be really great mm. so not knocking that but the people out there aspiring you know people are 
you know, people that have had, do you know what? If someone wants to put a filter on, I put a filter on sometimes on the story. That's fine. I have no problem with that. But equally, I put stuff on that's like completely, and he catches me in the worst places <laughs> 15 ever. Second rule on my no, social, fifteen yeah. second rule. You get what picture you get, and that's it. <laughs> um, but what I'm saying is, you you're creating something. You people are aspiring that actually isn't yeah. real. Yeah. It's like that is not real. You're aspiring. I was thinking about this. You know where people can go and have surgery now. So when I was young. You looked how you looked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you were like 20, you looked how you looked. Yeah. Now people are out there altering to look a certain way, but not everyone then can afford that. So again, they've got the pressure of aspiring to something that was surgically put on. Yes, yeah. but there's more of it now. So, you know, what We're people say. But no, no, but it's not what I mean. What I'm saying is, like, these young people that are coming through. Not only are you aspiring to look at like what's going on in social media, but you're actually aspiring to look like a lot of people out there who are your peers, but they've probably had work or something. So it's, it's not, not natural. The, it's not only the surgery because it's right. So this is yeah. So this is for example the way I look at it is Kim Kardashian is a perfect example. Listen, the world's woman has come from a, a, a good family. She had a good background. Yeah. Her dad was a good lawyer. So she started from, from a little bit of money. But to have been self-made to a billionaire unbelievable. is unbelievable. But she's done it through her looks. Yeah? She's done it through everything she looks. But she's surgically enhanced. Every single picture that goes on social media is filtered. And there are girls out there that are looking at that. Yeah. And they say, oh, I want skin like Kim. Kim, I want my body to look like Kim. You can't do that because not even she looks like that in real life. No, no. And that to, that to me is the problem. It's frightening. It is because I've got daughters and I see them trying to be like these people on social media. And I'm like, girls, you know that they don't look like this. And I feel like there should be this disclaimer thing that, that people put on social media saying these pictures are re-edited, yeah. they've been touched up, I've had surgery, so that people understand, these young generations understand. Mm. One thing I don't do is put filters on any of my pictures because I've got girls and I don't want the girls, to my other young girls to look at me and think, oh, I want to be like her, but she's perfect. Mm. No, I've got wrinkles and I've got open pores you know like my pores are big and I'm a bit short and dumpy and I've got little arm pterodactyl arms as well <laughs> you know my feet are tiny and I can never get shoes to fit do you know what I mean um yeah. I want people to see that I don't have anything that's against. why people probably love you maybe thank you you know that probably is you but, have got a very nice way about you but you thank have you got a, yeah great way very warm but I but I do agree with you I think it's like I'm, I've got two daughters as well I'm lucky they're not really affected in that yeah. way, are they at all, Joe? No. They're actually not like um then not those girls that, you know, or you know how can I put this? Like they're never the the girls that like, oh I'm gonna I'm gonna go and get myself a footballer. Oh, yeah, 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 not yeah. that or the like the dolly or they're not, you know, they're not. Um so we are quite lucky. Um, but I think maybe because they're a little bit older, it was that crossover, isn't it? Where Kiri used to watch a lot of YouTube, didn't she, when she yeah. was young? Um, but I think, yeah, and they all, obviously they're all, but they were a bit older when they came to it. But I think for your children, certainly it is going to be, again, another, cause it's a different decade, isn't it? And I think now for them, they, you know, that is all they see. Mm. Um, all, all they see as they're growing up. But I, I do get it. I mean, I think, that look for an adult you you know don't you, you we can see it mm. but like you say it's the children that are on there that probably because you've got children that age you're more attuned to that as well yeah. like i said i don't have a problem with people yeah. using filters i don't and i don't i'm not anti-filter you'd like them just to admit it yeah, but, yeah or but for me personally when my team accidentally put a filter on i get really angry and it's not and it's usually well, an accident but i'm like guys do not ever put filters on my face. Do yeah. not ever try and change anything about how I look because I already, as a person, have my own insecurities, I, but I don't want that to be hidden from people. Yeah. I think yeah. I want people to see that, no, I'm not perfect, yeah. and I don't care that I'm not perfect, and actually not being perfect is what makes us perfect, is what makes us individual, well, isn't you, it? Well, you did say, and I thought was, we were in Dubai, and from a man's point of view, this yeah. is not from mine, yeah. We were walking on the beach and there were some young girls, I don't know, in their early 20s, I suppose. Mm. 
and you said to me, he went, they look like they've all come out of a factory. They're yeah, the they same. look great. But where is the individuality of the way that, you know, yeah. your beauty, because beauty comes in so many yeah. shapes and sizes and different things. And I think about, like, people that maybe I've seen over the years growing up that I think might not be what Joe thinks is beautiful, but they were all really unique. Mm. If we think about some of the most famous women's, you know, back in even the 50s and 60s, their their beauty was you know unusual mm. quite they often. They were in very individual, but they? but yeah. you did. You said it looked like a factory. Yeah. Do we all? Want, and what's going to happen when they're fifty? Yeah, that's I what know. I look at. What they're going to look like? I know because there's no precedent for it, so we don't. I mean, they were having plastic surgery back in the fifties, yeah, but course, it was but not to yeah. the extent that it is now. Take a rib out here. Yeah, <laughs> like or you know, like a little tweak yeah. on the nose but, or a little jawline. But they were the doing, levels, but, of but the levels now. But the thing is, as well, back then, you everybody wanted to be an individual, whereas now everybody wants to look like Kim or Kylie yeah. or whoever it is, the person that Billie Eilish, yeah. whoever it is that they love. They want to emulate them. And there's nothing wrong with that. I understand yeah. it because they're young. I, like you, worry about what impact that's going to have on them when they're older. Because all these girls going out and having BBLs, what's their bum going to look like when yeah. gravity takes hold? It's got to fall hold? somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. And, and also, if you can afford it now, doesn't mean you can afford it when you're older. And then... Then how are you left? And what happens if something goes wrong and yeah. the amount of young people that are dying because they're going for surgery? Yeah. The thing is, we are... I'm not saying we're old women because well, we're we not are. old, well, but we're older, older, older women. We're more mature women, and we're in the social media in, in public eye. You're an older man, and you know we're more mature people. You're getting there now. <laughs> He's getting there. I think because when you get to a certain age, it's like that up and down, that anguish that you go through when you're younger kind of levels out. It does, yeah. Doesn't it? it and does. you become more mellow and laid back. And although I still want to look good, I'm not. I actually don't give a monkey's yeah. about what anybody oh, thinks about we can't about be 20, can we? No. You can't be 20 forever. No. I mean, Dolly Parton's looked 50 for about 100 years. but <laughs> She's the exception. Yeah, not all of us can be Dolly's, can we? No. But, but my point is, is that, like, we have the mental capabilities to be able to rationalise what we see on social media. The younger generation don't have that capability. Mm. They don't have that mental maturity yeah. and emotional maturity to be able to regulate that. And I, that's what worries me, which is why I feel like things like disclaimers and things should be brought in, you know, for yeah. huge stars like Kim, not for average people. No. Like, do what you want on your page. If you want to put a little filter and make your eyes blue today and purple tomorrow, yeah. do what you want. But I think when when people are in a position of being able to influence, I feel like it's really important. Yeah. But that's kind of digressed off of us talking oh, about you. No, it's fine. <laughs> We're I think supposed to be talking about you. It's important. It's important. <laughs> I think as a mum, I think when you're mums, though, you have more... Um, and you're in the public eye, you feel more passionately about things yeah. like that because like, you, like you've like you got daughters, I've got daughters. Yeah. And no, it's not just daughters, it's our sons Some, as yeah, well. I think but the males have so much pressure they as do. well. Huge amount of pressure. You know, they've got to look fit and yeah. their hair's got to be yeah. a certain way, their teeth have got to be yeah. good. And men didn't have that pressure when I was young. Yeah. It was just guys were guys. If they had a beer belly, they did. And if they didn't, yeah. they didn't. You know, you just, if you were lucky to find a guy who didn't get chubby when you fed him up, then you were, but it's yeah. totally yeah. different now. So let's wrap it up and just tell me what you have got planned in the pipeline for really near future. Cause I know that this book is about to come out. So that's yeah. one thing for you, Joe. So tell yeah. me about that. So, this book was undiscovered for 22 years. So my dad did that book in 94, all the tapes and a manuscript. And um, seven years ago, I was standing on the side of a football pitch and a guy came up to me and said, I got your dad's book. And I said, he didn't do a book. And I went round his house and he gave me a lunchbox full of Volca set tapes Doing the... and a manuscript that he'd printed off of a word processor at the time. And it'd been in the loft for 20 years. So it's been torn apart, put back together, the tapes listened to. And they've made this book out of it. Yeah, and it was As of yesterday, we're third in the football chart and it's released on the 25th of May. So it's not That's even out amazing. yet. So you can pre-order it on all on all, all platforms. And um, they've had to mix it when they've when they've gone through all it. Because everyone involved in that in original tapes is, uns is sadly dead. Oh, um, sad. Both so Les Clivero and, and my father. So the guy that did the original book. Mm. And so they've mixed it with 
my sp- addiction story really after okay. he died. They spoke um, to people in the family as well and took yeah, the take on things. So all different parts, but it's a, it's it's everything from his whole career, the Ferguson stuff all the way through, and and my stuff and your stuff. Right? But ultimately, it was I think it's just a great thing for you to have. Yeah, um, and it was quite. I thought it was quite. It's taken seven years yeah. to get to And on his 40th year, I thought it was really and a I still great thing to, to have. The tapes. Yeah, we've still got the tapes indoors and he's still not listened to them. Too much. I see him, I say it to people all the time, people talk to me about my dad every day. I love that bit. Mm. I see him on telly once a month for an old football stuff. That's fine, but he never did interviews. I don't hear his voice. I'm not sure. Mm. I think it's something I will do, but I don't know when. I've been saying that for seven years. You'll do it when you're ready. <laughs> That's what I think. So You'll do it when you're ready. It's here now. It's, it's finally out. It's, it's been a long, a long road. The writer Tim's done a lot of books and he's he's been amazing. He's, yeah, you know. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm really happy to hear that it's number three. Let's hope it gets a number one. I hope so. I'm sure it will when it gets released because then people will be able to actually have the physical thing in yeah. their hand. Yeah, it makes a difference, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, because at the minute you can just pre order. Yeah. Minute, so yeah. But Nicole, tell me what's going on for you in the new fi- near future. Well, I finished filming now, so that was sort of. I did reunion a couple of weeks ago, so finished filming, which has freed up a bit more time. Um, we're really just focusing in on the group. Um, I've got a couple of acquisitions coming up, so yeah, watch this space. Um, I'm going to be doing more sort of speaking, and as I said to you, other things that I'm going to be getting involved in going forward. So yeah, I'm obviously going to be doing more speaking obviously i need some help with that today because i'm a bit tongue-tied uh so i'm going to have some lessons um no and it is just you know getting in touch with young people and sort of spreading the word and trying to support people out there yeah and i think you're you're just going to do an amazing job of it because you're so aspirational for women to young women young boys whoever to look up to and think do you know what if if anyone can set me a good example nicole can well if i could do it they certainly can do it that's it that's it isn't it and and you guys are great i love talking to you i actually wish we had much longer but we i think we've really <laughs> we could talk the hind legs off a don- donkey as my <laughs> man would say but we'll have to meet up again 100 yeah, um i really enjoy talking to you both and thank you so much for coming and doing the podcast with both me and adam okay. oh, thank you so much what your social medias are let's see okay. what your social medias are Okay, so if you want to find out what I have got coming up, follow me on Nicole Seeley 74 on Instagram and Twitter. I have got, um, what have I got? TikTok. I have got a TikTok, but I don't actually use it that much. But watch this space because I've got some stuff coming up on it. Oh, good. Exciting. So you can follow me on Instagram at Joe underscore Seeley one. And on TikTok, I'm Joe Seeley one. And Twitter, Joe Seeley one. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you want to find out more about this amazing couple, Joe and Nicole Seeley, you've got their Instagram, TikTok and Twitter handles. And if you've got any questions or comments, don't forget to put them down below. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys, for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it.